G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in today's video I'm going to take you through how to trigger a journey using an API in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Now there are heaps of ways to get your subscribers onto a journey. I covered some of these in my previous Journey Builder video. But for today we're going to focus on the API method. Now if we jump into the REST documentation in Marketing Cloud, we can find the interaction for Fire the Event. It's a post call that allows us to trigger a record or a payload of information onto a pre-configured journey. As you can see here, we provide our subscriber's ID, the event definition ID, and a payload of data to send through that event into the journey. So let's start building the things that we need to trigger this journey for ourselves. First thing we have to do is to make a data extension to put this information into. To start with, I'll go into one of my folders and just go create and make myself a brand new data extension. Now I like to use the template for this one. I like to use the uh, triggered send definition template. So I'll choose that one and go OK. This way it has some pre-configured fields. I'm going to call this one my journey API and I'll go next. Now, the cool thing is here, the subscriber key and email address are pre-filled. So you can leave those. I'll make some new fields. Let's make a name field and a other field. I'll make those ones nullable for now. Let's subscribe a key on subscribe a key. Perfect. I'll go create. So this data extension is going to be the data extension that all of the data goes into that comes through this API call into Journey Builder. So with the API complete, let's now jump into Journey Builder and make a few things in there as well. So the first thing we need is a brand new journey. So I can jump in and go create new journey, make a brand new multi-step journey. Once the journey loads, I can jump in and choose an API event as my entry source. So I'll drag and drop an entry event and click on the tile. Now currently I've got no entry events currently made, so I can create a brand new event. Now for the event, I'm going to call this one my journey entry API. And here is my event definition. I can choose the data extension for the data to go into. So I'll select data extension and navigate to my newly created DE. There it is there and go summary. Now I could put some filtered contact information here as well to make sure only certain contacts come in. But for now, I'll leave this one as blank, which means all records that come into this API will enter the journey. So I'll go done. That's now my API created to bring records in. But right now this journey is pretty boring, so let's make a few activities. What I'll do is I'll jump down here. I'm going to make an update contact. It's a nice easy activity. I'll drag and drop that in. I'm going to make this tile target my journey entry API data extension. So I'll target that very same data extension just to make it easy. There it is there. I'm going to make it do other and it's working. We are new value. I'll go to summary. And so now with every record that comes through, once they hit this first tile, their other value is going to change to it's working. Great. We'll go done. Now I'll change this down to just one minute. So they're kicked out nice and quickly. Let's also change our journey settings to be re-enter any time just for good measure. We'll go done. And there is our journey. Looking pretty good. Let's go save and let's launch our journey. There we are, you're on your way. So now we have the journey complete. We have our API activity set up and here is our event definition. Now that key is really important. If we go back and have a look at our documentation, we have to provide that event definition key. So you have to make sure you have a copy of that key as well as a data payload to use. Okay, so now for the fun stuff, let's try and trigger this API to send some data into our journey. To start with, I'm going to probably need some data to send to. So I might just jump back into one of my folders and find a few records I can send to. I've got some sample rows here. I think I've got Astro, which I can now send to. Perfect. So I've got that. Let's now open up our Postman and we can do an API call in Postman to trigger off this journey. I've got myself access to the Salesforce Marketing Cloud APIs. I'll put a link in the description below so you can download this Postman package for yourself. You can have a look at the fire entry event in the interactions under Journey Builder to try it out for yourself. Now, I have jumped in and configured this already in Postman. There's heaps of resources online to show you how to do this. So I'll jump straight into the payload for this call. 
I need to fill in these values to make this call. So for my contact key, I'm going to send this journey to Astro today. So I'll use Astro's ID. I'm going to jump in and send that as the contact key. Now contact key again is going to be the subscriber key for your record. So make sure you have that as the correct value. In my data extension, I've also got subscriber key as a value. So I'll put the same value there. My next one in my payload is email address, of course, because I was doing the, uh, the data extension send. So I've got Astro's email address, perfect. I'll jump back into Postman and paste that in there. And the thing is though, is that my data extension had some additional fields. If I jump back into my data extension and check out my Journey API, I had two more fields, name and other, both text fields. Now they are nullable, so they're optional, but for this example, let's go and put them in. So I'll do a comma, then to my next value, and name is gonna be equal to Astro. There we are. And below that, I have one more field which was other, and for other, I'm going to put, uh, this is Cam. There we are, that'll do. So that is my payload for my journey. Subscriber key, email, name, other. Subscriber key, email, name, other, perfect. I've got my event definition key. So I can grab that from my activity here, event definition key, copy that, get back in the postman, and there is my definition key. And that is my payload complete. I can check out my interaction and make sure it's looking good. All right, looks very similar to the examples. Perfect, there's one more step that we need, and that's to make ourselves an API key so we can trigger this for ourselves. Okay, so I've jumped into my Salesforce setup and I've gone into my install packages and made myself a brand new demo key. Now for this key, I'm gonna to have to make some components. So I can go add a component. I'm gonna choose an API integration, not the Journey Builder entry source. So API integration and next. I'll then choose the server to server integration and go next. And here's the fun part. I have to choose the scopes for this API. Now I shouldn't be ticking all these boxes. I just want to tick the ones I need for this activity. So I'll show you a cool trick. What you can do is go into the documentation for the API call and copy the location of the call. You'll see it's interaction v1 events. It's the same thing in the post information here. So if I copy that information, then my uh, navigation tool here, I'll scroll right to the bottom and click on my REST API permissions and scopes. What you can do here is go control F to pick up uh, to your find, then paste the interaction events. And then there we are, we can see straight away that it's the list and subscribers read under contacts. Okay, so under contacts, list subscribers read. Into my setup, and if I scroll down, I'll find contacts, list subscribers read, good. Are there any other ones? I can go uh, the next button on my find and there's a second call here, which is the journey builder access for journey read. So I'll find my automation journeys and my read journeys as well. Those are my two requirements. I'll check once again, I've got journey read, list subscribers. Journey read, list subscribers, perfect, that's it. That's my key set up, I can go save. And so here's my API credentials, which I can use for my call in Postman. Okay, so I've put my credentials into the Postman configuration for this API and I'm ready to go. My payload looks complete and so I can then go send. Let's see what happens, event instance and my status of 201 created. Perfect, so it looks like the result uh, completed successfully. Let's go back into Journey Builder and check it out for ourselves. We're done. And hopefully I can now click on the view entry results and there we are, there's my one record. I can also jump back into my data extension and I can check the records tab. It says there's zero records right now. If I click on records, I'm hoping I'll have, there's my record. Now here's the cool thing. It says it's working. I'm pretty sure my payload said this is Cam. The reason it says this is working is because back on my journey, I had that initial step, which said, and there you go, it's completed, which was to update the record to say this is working. So that's all good and well that we can trigger the journey using Postman. How about trying to trigger it with some SSJS on a cloud page? So I started off by making my usual cloud page testing. I've got a cloud page which is referencing this content block by ID. Got my test code which I've saved and so I can quickly refresh my page and there's my test code. So to start off with, we need to get some of the SSJS functions that we need to make this call. Now luckily, I've got a blog page already about doing some quick starts for the OAuth 2 access. 
I've got the SSJS function in here as well. So I'll skip past the M script and here's gonna be my SSJS call for getting an auth token in Marketing Cloud. So let's copy some of that text and we'll jump back into my content here and let's paste in our auth code. So I need some credentials from my uh, new API. So I'll jump in. Now you shouldn't do this normally. You should definitely encrypt your client ID and secret. But for this example, I'll use it as plain text. And don't worry, I'm gonna delete this key once I do this video. So I got my client ID and client secret. I also want my auth URI, so I'll copy that as well. And I want my auth URI there. Okay, so there is my token call. So I should be able to use this to return back my credentials. And it should hopefully respond with my token and the payload. I might just use a line break to break those up. I should see my token at the end. So let's try that for ourselves. I'll go save and refresh our page. And there we are. We've got an access token coming through. Perfect. So with our token working, let's now go back into our code and make our actual call to our post endpoint for the fire event. So for this one, we can probably reuse some of this code. We can take this piece here, which is our post call, and go down a few lines and do our new call. And this will be our fire event. The fire event, we're gonna use a different URL, of course. We're actually gonna be using the rest instance URL, which I've got a value for here. We're gonna add something to it. We need to add the actual address for this call, which is the interaction events, that one there. So that plus interaction events. It's JSON payload, yes, and I need to make a new payload. This will be the journey payload. Journey payload, which I should set above. The payload, luckily for us, is gonna be the same as the payload we used in Postman. So I can copy this payload, go back into my content, and paste it straight in. So I can use that value. There we are, close it off. And there it is. And what I might do, I'm not going to use Astra this time. I'll go Cam. That'll do. Name will be Cam. And this is Astro. So what we'll now do is hopefully this will fire. We have to provide some additional headers though for the interaction. We have to provide the authorization and the bearer token. So I'll copy those values down. To do this, I need to make two more ordinals in my post call. It's the header value, uh, the header name and header value. So the header name is authorization. So I believe we have to do it in square brackets actually. Authorization, and it's gonna be bearer, like that in square brackets, bearer, and then we have to add the access token. The access token we have just here as access token. Perfect. So now our application JSON, we'll hit that event up. We have stringified payload. We're using the authorization of bearer and token. Perfect. Once that's all done, we need to get the output. Now the output's gonna be a string. So what I can do is I'll do another write function. I'll use stringify. My stringify is gonna be of the requests that we just performed. All right, let's give that a whirl. I'll go save and let's press F5. All right, status code 201. I can see the corner there. So it looks like the response has happened. It's fired that, uh, that payload for us. Let's check it out now back in the data extensions. So I'll go back into my demos folder and hopefully our journey API now has two records. All right, let's try it out. Records, I've got cam and it's working. All right, there's our record there. So in journey builder, I should see my entry events and two out of two, perfect. And there's two examples of how you can trigger a journey using the API function, one using Postman and another using SSJS on a cloud page. Hope you enjoyed the walkthrough of these functions today. If you have, please let me know in the comments below and don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud videos.